Wait, when did I turn evil? What? This is not supposed to happen on the first thing. Go back. No evil mo- Wait, it's not turning- Hello? Hello? Why am I evil? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> My hotkeys, please. <laughs> oh, we love that there's a good scuff just instantly. Oh, and I can't scroll with that. I love that. I really, really love that. What is this? Why do I have this on? Oh, it's emo, not evil. There we go. <laughs> I was going to sleep. You can't just... Oh, no. I'm sorry. Teehee. <laughs> it's, it's, it's statics time. Um, It's statics. We're doing statics. Um, I don't know anything about statics. Uh, not entirely true. I know some things about statics. I think I can, I think I can worm my way into getting the statics, um, which is why we're doing it. Because technically, there's only one problem he said we could do, but I don't believe him. I think he's lying. Um, I know vectors. <laughs> How hard can it be? <laughs> uh, famous last words. Okay, I need to. Um, there's a very specific setup I need to have for this, so we're gonna... Oh, I need to like move my shit over here. Um, should I have my Twitch stuff over? Hey, Umbra! I'm streaming at a time where you can make it now. Isn't that fun? That's fun. Yeah, this is- Oh! Oh, god damn it. Oh, I'm- Oh, I'm... it's so scuffed. It's so scuffed. Everything is scuffed. Okay, that's going over there. There we go. Um, and then this will come over here, so I can look at that, and I can have my chat over there. Okay. Okay, what am I supposed to do? It says, okay, okay, okay. Um, I gotta go, sorry, no worries, no worries. I'll probably do earlier streams at some point or other. Um. Okay, uh... Sorry, I gotta read this. Okay, so we need to... Begin each problem at the top of a new page. A covered page is to be used with my name and section. Okay, well, I'm not gonna dox myself, but we will write my name here. Demi. I don't know what section I'm in. Um, what section am I in? Oh, I feel gore. Two. Oh, two. What is it on? It's on like Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nine to ten. There we go. There we go. That's my cover page. I'm gonna leave this out here because I'm gonna put. I'll just put the same one. Okay. So, all right. This is like a class about like physics, but like worse. Um, I don't know how to describe it. You'll have to see. It's about, like, equilibrium of stuff. So it's either, um, something that's at rest or something that's at constant velocity. So when the forces, when the acceleration equals zero, and when you add up all the forces, they're gonna equal zero. Um, but I think for the first thing, we just have to do a unit problem. But we have to do it in a certain way. If you create a problem statement, create your own concise problem statement with emphasis on defining knowns and what you want to find, and associated other unknowns. So okay, the first question is... Let's just like... Write one. Okay, maybe I should... Well, I'm turning this in online, so I can write it in whatever color I want. Okay, so a person weighs 35 pounds on the moon. 35 pounds, and we have g equals 5.32 feet per second squared. Determine the mass of the person in slugs, slinches, and kilograms. Okay, so we need mass in slugs, slinches, and then kg. And then, what is the weight of the person on Earth in pounds and newtons? And then, mg, Earth, um, n, and v. Okay. 
just so I don't have to keep going back and forth. So, I don't really think we need to make a problem statement for this. I'm not gonna do that part of it, because I think that's when we have more static -y problems. This is, like, pretty much just unit conversion. Um, so we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, like the next- oh, wait, I looked at the wrong thing. Okay, study the given body. There's no body. Um, that's- that's not really useful. I think these are for problems that isn't this problem, so let's just do it. Okay, so we've got uh, an mg equals 35. And we need to find 35 pounds. So 35 pounds. One. Uh, that's not the best way to do it. M equals, sorry, M. We'll just say M like person. Just to be person and G moon. G moon, M person. M. There's no other M in the problem, but whatever. Subscripts are fine. M P equals 35 pounds divided by 5.2. Per second squared. Okay, wait, pounds? Do I need to bring that into kilograms? What is a pound in units? Pound? Do I not know this? Pound units? Oh, wait, that's in kilograms. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, wait, yeah, no, we're chilling. I think, wait. I don't know what, what a pound is like. A pound is like a force, right? This this is right, right? I think this is right. Let me get my calculator. Real quick. What is it? I think this is right, because a pound is like, is like a unit of force, right? Yeah, because you have like, you have like, you have like pounds of, like foot, foot pounds of like torque and stuff, right? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, okay. But like, it's also like moon pounds, like, 35 divided by... 5.32. Wait, so if I say... Wait, what's 1 over... Divide mass value by 2.25? Oh, that like seems weird. Wait, let's see, like, pounds to mass. I, I almost never have to work with this. You can get mass in grams. Like pounds to mass gravity equation, right? Like there's an equation for it. Like it's just telling me like a number, but that's like this is like not right. <laughs> I care about the Earth. Watching me do math is. <laughs> I think that's funny because I'm not even doing well at this math, bro. This is like, this is the worst math I've ever done. It's literally me trying to convert pounds to fucking kilograms. Because a kilogram is a unit of mass, right? Right? Is kilogram mass? Yes, it's a unit of mass. Is pound a unit of mass, bro? What? What? Is it actually? Wait, okay, is pound a unit of mass or weight? I should probably, like, not look at Quora. The sad fact is that it's used of a unit of weight or of mass. Bro, what? 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 Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, wait, there's a slug. Wait, but then how do I know if it's weight or mass? 
It's a unit, it says it's some unit of mass. A pound is a unit of force, and a kilogram is a unit of mass? Bro, wait, what? That's a, that's a set. It's a unit of mass. Okay, it's a unit of mass. Okay, wait, are they asking, did they ask how much they weigh on the moon, or not? Determine the mass of Earth. Maybe they're trying to trip me up. Pound can be force, <laughs> mass, or weight. Oh no, bro. I feel like they're trying to say it's weight. Because otherwise, then it's just like... <sighs> pound... Pound as weight equation. This is not a good start to this class. This is the first part of doing this class, bro. <laughs> Uh, it's ex equal to the gravitational force on a mass of one arvadois-pois pound on the surface of Earth. Drown him Friday? Oh, I don't have- okay, I can- <laughs> Oh, so many drown him Fridays. Um, wait a second. Okay, wait. Let me, like, look at some images. Pound is weight. A box is a mass of that. Um... Yeah, that, like, give the weight in both newtons and pounds. Yeah. 1 LBF equals 1 pound times GN. What? A fun drowning H2O playing Overwatch with a friend? Oh, that's awesome. I will- I will- I will take a sippy. This is like actually making my brain like hurt. <laughs> why is this? Why is this so- Why is this so- I thought like a pound was like a force, right? Because like when you stand on a scale, it's measuring like your mass and then times gravity, right? So like if you if you weigh 35 pounds on the moon, then you don't weigh that much on Earth. Also, 35 pounds is not a lot, so I'm gonna assume that they mean the force. But they say a person weighs 35 pounds. Okay, that has to be a force. That has to be a force. That has to be a force. <laughs> they weigh 30. They're a baby. They're a toddler, actually. Actually, a little baby. Me and my friend who is made of peanuts, packing peanuts. Um... Okay, yeah, that's 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 fine. Then. So we can get a mass because if we get a mass and then we get something like normal, then we'll know we're right. That's what statics is all about, baby. About about contextualizing answers. Wait a second, this is gonna give me like less. Wait, mass. Yeah, wait, what? Isn't this gonna give me, like, six kilograms? How much does, like, a... wait, six kg to pounds? <laughs> How did they weigh 30? They weigh 30? Wait, no, that was not 35. They, what did that say? 13 pounds! They don't weigh 13 pounds! What the... what is going on? Okay, if it's... Well, how do they weigh 13 pounds? Wait, what? Am I like actually... Am I actually... I'm... I'm... I'm lying. What is this? What? Is... What? <laughs> wait, maybe there's like a... Wait, what's one of those like... Oh, find out your weight on the moon. Moon weight calculator, thank you. Let's say I'm like, I don't know, 110. Okay, yeah, 18. It's Sunday. It is Sunday. I didn't know it's it's drowning Friday Sunday. Okay, you weigh less on the moon. Wait, so why am I like fucking this up? What the hell? I should be multiplying gravity over here. Huh? Your mass is not the 30 f wait, bro, why am I like actually dumb? <laughs> Wait, because gravity is less... Am I like- is it not weight? Is it not like a weight force? Divide your weight by 9.8 and then multiply by 1.622. Divide your earth weight. Yeah, so like you do- So let's say you weigh like, I don't know. Let's say you weigh 100 pounds. You're gonna divide that by 
This is like great stuff. <laughs> Gives you like your mass. And then this you multiply by the the gravity. The the gravity of the moon. Sorry, I should probably write like G Earth. Using an easier math. Uh, please, I just link. Can you do some here? Let, yeah, let's see. Let's see what this this math over here. Yeah, yeah, we can do this math here. Look, here's a here's a math. Um, here's some math right here. This is just about the same level as what I'm doing now. So like, we can totally just like do this for a little bit. Um, okay, so these are kind of hard actually. Like, I'm not gonna lie. This is like you know sometimes you don't do this until like like uh, you know I'm I'm like a sophomore, but like. I'm like halfway through sophomore standing into like junior, so like this is like this can be like kind of hard. Um, but what you want to do is like you can like use your fingers to do these. So you can do like one, two, three, and there's like another one, and so that's like four. And then we have to like remember like all the different the different like symbols, like add that one up. Um. So yeah, that's that's how you do that one. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of tricky. Like especially like oh this one right here, this one's like that was that was pretty hard. No, don't cut the entire layer. Like this one too. Like so you go like one, two. Okay, so then we know that one's two, and then we have another one, two, and then if you do it on your fingers again, it's, it's actually just like the last one, but it's like split up differently, so it's like actually four as well, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's just about, just about the same kind of stuff, you know? And then you can start using, like, Omega to, like, find the acceleration. <laughs> I'm actually- why am I- why am I so- why is this making me so- Because, like, if you're 35, 35, do you want to, like... Then you would get this, so, like, whatever, you would weigh, like, I don't know, like, 8... Let's say you weigh like eight pounds. I don't know. It, it wouldn't be eight. Let's, let's actually like get the. I, I'm like actually like tripping so hard. What has happened? Okay, so you weigh like 16. So it's like 16, and then 16 divided by 1.6 is your like mass. Like 16 divided by 1.6, and then this times 9.8. Yeah. What? How does this person weigh 35 divided by 5.32? How do they weigh 6 kilograms? That's... <laughs> this times 9.8. Oh no, they weigh 64 pounds? Okay, but that's still like, not that much. This is like, kind of a... This is weird. This is weird. I, I don't like this. This is kind of scary. Okay, what did I say? 6. Five seven kilograms. That's like kind of scary, is the thing. Um. Okay. We'll just go along with it, I guess. And then we'll like do, we have a bunch of space, so I can just redo it. Okay. Slugs. How much is a slug? Kilogram to slug. <laughs> um. Divided by fourteen. So let's say we'll say six point. 7 kilograms over 1 times, um, here's 14 kilogram, 14.594 uh, kilograms for one slug. I guess. 14.594. So that's 0. Point or, uh, 450, which is like good, I guess. Do I need to do scientific notation? I really hope I don't. I should probably check that. Let's see. Um, analysis. Is there stuff to remember? Um, remember units and appropriate significant figures. Fuck me, dude. I hate significant figures. Um, okay, so we have 35, that's two sig figs, and then if we're dividing, that's three, so we want to use the least amount of sig figs, so that's just two, so we'll round this up. Worst thing ever. I mean, I get, I get it, I get it, but like, also, also no, 
you know? Like, like no. That's four or five. Like, <sighs> I don't like it. I don't like it. It's math. Can I just, like, it said double underline your answers, which, like, I don't think is gonna, like, help that much. I can't tell where that is. I'm gonna, like, also box it in. They didn't say I couldn't box it in around my double underlined. Briefly conclude comment. I like slug. <laughs> Listening, you talk about math makes me feel so stupid. Okay, I feel so dumb right now, bro. I don't know how to. I don't know why this is like actually making me. <laughs> this is, this is... Why is the why is the weight problem making me? I need to I need to redeem myself in the next problem. Oh my god, this is like. Like, making me go insane. Okay, um, slinches. I don't know how much a slinch is. <laughs> Slinchogram? Wait, 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 wait. Why did it, like, correct it to slinch? Slinchogram. <laughs> uh, how many kilograms in one slinch? 175? Oh my god, 175.1. Okay, we'll do like 175. I always put like three sig figs when I'm dividing stuff. One, um... KG. What the hell is a slinch? Who uses slinches? That's like a roll doll word. That's like a- that's like a... Cat in the hat word. He's like, oh, today we're going to make a slinch. Okay, zero point. Okay, three sig figs, so... Zero... Three... Eight. Slinches. There we go. Is everybody- everybody happy with that? Do we feel like that's a good- a good number of slinches to have? I don't like this! This is making me kind of insane. This is actually making me kind of insane. Wait, what's- the gravitational constant on the moon. Okay, 1.6. So it'll be like less. Like if we weighed, let's say we weighed 100 pounds on Earth, then we divide that by 9.8. That's 10 pounds, 10.2. Then we multiply this by like 5 point something. It's like, it's about 51. So that's like roughly half, but so like... <sighs> Which is like, correct, because if it were 6.6 .6 kilograms, then we multiply that by 5, that would give us like... Wait. Wait. <sighs> okay, it's 35 pounds divided by... Oh no, we're going the other way, by 5.232. Oh, this times 9.8. Yeah, it's about half, so like 64. That's... Like, it makes sense, but like, I don't like it. Do you know what I mean? Like, why would they- why would they give me a problem that has a person with like, such a small weight? Unless it's a child. <laughs> like... Like, it's not even like 100 pounds, which is like, also kind of small. I mean, it's not incredibly small, but... Anyway, what did they also- they asked for one other thing? Slugs and- oh, and kilograms, okay. Determine, okay, what is the weight of the person in pounds and newtons? So, mass person times gravity earth equals 6.6 .6 kilograms times 9.81 um, meters per second squared will give us newtons. 6.6 times 9.8 is 64. <clears throat> 64.7. And now, again, sig fig is only two, so we gotta be 65 newtons. And then, oops, um, newton to pound. Oh, pound force? Wait, what? Fine, kg to pound. No, but like... Bro, this pound thing's actually fucking me up. <laughs> like, a pound is...
Wait, okay, like convert mass to newtons. Yeah, multiply the number of kilograms by 9.8. It's like, is it like pound force or like just like pounds? <laughs> this actually makes me so mad. <laughs> Why is it so hard? Okay, we'll just say like um, kilograms to pounds then. But they're saying newtons and pounds, so I feel like it's gotta be pound force. Fuck it, we ball. We're doing pound force. So then. Um, 65 newtons times how much new uh, one newton is zero, point, well, let's see, 4.448 newtons to one LBF equals, okay, 65 divided by 4.448, 14, <clears throat> 14, 15. L, B, F. Like, doesn't that just sound stupid? Anyway, this problem is stupid. Next problem. <laughs> I'm getting rid of that. We're getting rid of that. <laughs> There's, like, an easier problem, bro. The fact that, like, this next problem is easier is, like, very funny to me. Okay. Um. Alright. So, we're, we're trying to find, um, components of a vector. Also not something that really should need a problem statement, so I'm not going to give it a problem statement, because I think that's a little dumb. Um, there's an airplane. Should I make it a furry? Can we make it a furry? I'm going to make it a furry airplane. You know like when they like make planes furries? How little fun is an engineer, right? <laughs> Normal things that I've said. <laughs> I'll give it cool legs. Who's to say in statics that we can't do that, right? My professor's gonna see this and they're gonna be like, what the hell are you doing, you... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it just looks like a ghost dog. <laughs> this is awesome, actually. Oh, I don't gap about what everybody says. This is cool. There we go. <laughs> There's the wing. There's the wing. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not even the problem. It's not about this. There's a force that's going. <laughs> Which way is it going? Okay, the total integration of surface tractions and pressures on an aircraft can be represented as one single aerodynamic force that's not given an arrow. I think it's up. I think it's up. Yeah, it's up. This dog has an arrow. <laughs> this is- this wing is so bad. I'll make it like a wing like that. There we go, that's a little bit. This is like a flying dog. <laughs> okay, here's the force. I don't know if he wants us to like- <laughs> Sorry. Wow, we need to free the body. Okay, this is gonna be Fx, and this is gonna be Fy. I don't know if he wants us to use a specific color for forces, because he does that, but whatever, who cares. Okay, this is, um, drag, and this is lift. Okay, so F equals... I will do magnitude of F equals 7 thousand pounds. Oh, and this angle is six degrees. So let's say F X. Okay, if we were looking at this, F X is gonna be our Y, actually, because the way that I just think about it is like if a reference angle is placed on the unit circle, this is actually X and this is actually Y. So I do that, so fx equals um, 7,000 pounds times, um, and y is up and down, that is sine, sine 6 degrees, 
And let's make sure that our calculator is in degrees, not uh, radians. Kind of unswag, but whatever. Cosine is also like the adjacent. Um, doesn't really matter which way you do it. But our fx should be a lot smaller, so that can tip us off. Okay, mode. Oh, I'm in degrees. Nice. So, 7... It's actually not a good thing that I'm in degrees. Why? I don't know why. Okay, um, times sine of 6. That is 731. And if this is a significant figure, that is... Just 1. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't have that be that big. I cannot have that be significant figures. I need to ask him about significant figures because all around it, 700 pounds. One SF. Uh, okay, uh, 7,000 times, uh, times cosine of six. That should be much larger. Yeah, 6961.65. Five equals, we got a double underline. Um, we just need one sig figure, so it's 7,000, bro. This is so bad. 7,000. One has a. I did it, I did it, guys. I figured out the sig figs. Uh. Oh, dear lord. If they put a decimal, then it would have been four sig figs, bro. Well, okay, good, we did it. Let me just, like, look, let's see. So, the steps to analysis are... These are all for, like, actual statics problems. This is not a statics problem. This is just a force component thing. Um, okay, let's see if we can get to an actual statics problem. Here's an actual statics problem. Okay, here we go, here we go. Finally, we're getting to the meat. This document is gonna have so many layers. Okay, let's do this. All right, love this, I love this, I love this. Let's do a boats. So here's our first boat. That's our boat, okay. Just everybody pretend. Okay, so we have a vector over here. This is vector P. And we have a vector over here, a vector Q. Um, and this is 12 meters. My engineering thing, it looks like this, right? Yeah. 12 meters, and this is 24 meters, so we've got kind of an angle going on there. And then we've got over here, uh, the same kind of angle, essentially. Um, is it drawn to scale? Not really. Let's maybe draw it a little bit more to scale. Something like that. It's gonna be more, so we're trying to figure out how to like put this in equilibrium. Okay, so P equals 38 kilonewtons, that's a lot of newtons. And Q, oh, never mind. Oh, no, 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 we're, yeah, we're, we're good. I was about to say Q is larger, it's not larger. Okay, so our problem statement is gonna be um, determine or find no need to be fancy. Find the equalizing vector to um, uh, for the house boat to not accelerate. It's like a decent enough problem statement. Or just like, I don't know, don't have our boat, like, get stolen by other boats. Oh, there are boats here, by the way. There's a boat. Ah, oh, Q is in the way. I didn't even write P. There we go. And then, there we go. <laughs> the boats. Okay, so determine, the, so let's see. We need to study the given body and think about how you're going to isolate the portion of interest, or what you want to analyze. Um, 
Um, okay, so state any specific problem assumptions. Next, the FBD. This is kind of like a free body diagram, but not really. Draw an outline of the free to isolated body. Sketch to scale. Put a coordinate system. Um, do not have them off in space, so we'll do this. I. That's not where I goes. Oh boy. I. J. Use coordinates to form unit vectors and blah 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 blah. You know, all that. Um. Where's my shit? Uh, coordinate system, I need to label it. Yep, key dimensions, maybe included. Uh, forces, draw and label forces, and then reactions. I don't think we need to do. Count your unknown forces to determine the number of unique equations you can write given geometry and force systems. There go. You can write. Uh, given geometry and force systems, there might be three results. So this is statistically determinant, which is adequately constrained. Because we'll have P plus Q equals R. This is statistically, statistically determinant. Big word for we can solve it. <laughs> Write down the governing equilibrium equations you've chosen. Sure. If you have written them, solve for the unknowns. That's awesome. I haven't done that. Okay. Cool. So we have to do P plus Q. Um, let me think about the best way to do this. Uh, if we take these as vectors, and then um, normalize them, and then uh, multiply them by their magnitude, we actually don't even necessarily need to do that. Let me just check one thing. So if we say 16 squared plus 32 squared, we should get 38 squared. And if that's correct, then we don't have to do anything. We can just add them like vectors. Okay, and then 38 squared. No, it is not that. So we're going to just normalize it because I am a silly man and I would like to do this like linear algebra. So we're going to say 38 times 1 over the square root of 16 squared plus 32 squared. And then we're going to have the first one, our x is negative 16 and our y is positive 32. And we're going to say plus um, 26 times 1 over 12 squared is 24 squared, and that is going to be in the positive 12 and negative 20, uh, positive 24, uh, negative 24. No, I lied. 24 and negative 12. And we're going to add them up. We'll see if my professor gets mad at me for doing that <laughs> instead of something else. So yeah, 16 squared, so 38 times, or divided by 1280. Um, can I get that as a fraction? I don't like that. Oh no, it's not, it wouldn't be 1280, it'd be the square root of 1280. Which is not gonna look nice. Is there an easier way for me to do this? I mean, I can take out a... If I'm just trying to normalize them, I can take out a 2, or I can take out a 16, because um, that'll be in the same direction. Sure, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. So this will be negative 1, 2, and this will be 2, negative 1. Oh, okay, that should be a lot easier on the math side of things. And then this will be 1 squared plus 2 squared. Yeah, they'll uh, work out because, you know, the fractions. 1 plus 2 squared. Oh, uh, yeah, that's squared. That work. So we have 38 over root 5 times negative 1 over 2. Or not over 2, whoa. That's a matrix, bro. 
26 over 5 times 2. So then we can just add them up here. So this will be equals negative 38. We'll just leave the root 5 out here. Um, so I'm just going to add this and this. Um, because we're essentially doing negative 38 over 5 plus 2 times 26 over 5, which would be, it's 2 times 26, um, 52 minus 38, 14. So 14. And then the other one is 2 times 38, so 38 times 2. 76, and then this minus 26, which is 50. That seems like a lot. Does that make sense? Let's see. So 14 and 50 means we're going a lot more in the y direction. Um, that would be like, if this is our base point, then that would be like, well, 50 divided by root 5, we have to remember. So 50 divided by square root of 5 is 22. Okay, so we're going more in the, uh, more in this direction, like about here, and we're going up a little bit here. That'd be like here-ish. Um, I'll draw R in a different color. R. Yeah. Wait, no, that is not what R equals. I'm lying. I'm lying. <laughs> um, we need the opposite of that, don't we? Because they're pulling, in total, they're pulling, like, well, two over this way, and f not two. Uh, what is that, like? eight over and then two up-ish, which is like not true, but um, that difference in weight. So we need to do the opposite of R. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna say like R inverse, um, let's see this, R inverse equals, there we go. Cool, so, yeah, if the boats are moving at constant velocity, what must the force on the tow hook where P and Q... Wait. Oh, 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 oh. So our, um, what this is saying is that we have the boat, like this boat pulling this way, so it'll be this. What's this vector? That's our inverse R. So that should just be minus both of those things, so r equals r. I don't know if that's right, but like, whatever. They might not want me to write it like this, they might want me to write it like as i and j, which would be like 14 divided by 5 i hat plus 50 divided by root 5 j hat. It's the same difference. I personally don't like writing that because... Wait. E standard. <laughs> there we go. E standard, baby. Who loves dead faces? Okay. Okay. Um, and then our, uh, like, force toe equals negative 14. Negative 14, negative 50. Now, is this how you're supposed to do it? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know why they want us to double underline our answers instead of like just boxing them, because I like boxing them, but. Ooh, okay, okay, more statics, more statics. Tee hee, tee hee. Sorry, this is like 2-2. It wasn't actually 3. I don't know why. Oh, probably because it was like from lecture 2. But I think I can do all these. Yeah. Okay. Alright. 
we've got a... I'm going to... So we have a body that we would like to free. This is our body. A 360 pound sign. So this is going to be um, weight equals 360 LBF. So then we have one going this way, which is our force AB. That's not really a great way of saying that, but that's okay. Could I should maybe just say F A B a little better. And then F A C. Um Yeah, this one will be bigger because it's got a larger magnitude. So F A B equals Why? What is this obsession with with forced pounds? Maybe because we're in America, I guess. Law. FAC equals 200. I'm gonna just keep writing LBF so I don't get confused, but... So we have to figure out, um, I guess that in Newtons, or... Okay, we need to figure out the angles required for equilibrium. Okay. So we know that our resultant, we have, we have another force. Yes, we have another force as well. This is our F, G, which is the, oh, I can just leave it as weight, honestly. It's not the worst thing ever. So we know that, okay, problem statement which is like, we want to, um, what do we want to find? We want to find, um, yeah. we want to find, find angles which create equilibrium. Angles of omega. And that is, by the way, keep alpha and beta. Cool. So our equation, we know that F A B plus F A C plus weight equals zero. Does not go anywhere. There's no net force. Um, and so if we want to be a little bit more religious about it, um, I guess we could just do it with vectors, actually, instead of doing it with components. Um, I don't really mind that too much. We need to... I don't want to do this, actually, because... Uh, we might need to do it with uh, components, actually, because I don't know. I mean, let me think about this. So, when normally when I do vector stuff, uh, I go off of like a thing and then I normalize it, like we did in the last problem, and then we multiply by the magnitude. But in this one, we're trying to find the um, angle it's at, so we don't have any information about the length of the... don't have any information about the direction of the vector, which is really what we base the stuff on. We only have stuff about the magnitude, so I guess I could say, like, x1, x2, x1, y1, x2, x2, y2. That seems a little bit... seems a little bit bad. <laughs> is the thing, because 
We have no way of setting up the relationship between them, really. We don't know anything about the angle between them. Let's do it with components. Oh, actually, let's do this. So yeah, we know that F, A, B, X. Um, no, F, A, B, F, A, C, X, minus F, A, B, X, needs to equal zero. And then also we know that F, A, B, Y, plus F, A, C, Y, minus W, equals zero. So, um, not minus W, we're going to say equals W. <laughs> Faby. <laughs> Faby and Facey. So, in this case, we can use the magnitude, and then the angle of each of them, and we can set up a, I believe this is, well, what did we say, statistically determinant? Statistically determinant. Statistically determinant, I believe. Because I think we can use this. So let's call this one one, and this one two. And we'll say for two. So FABY, so that's 180, 185 times FABY, if this is our angle, we're looking for this, which is going to be the cosine. Cosine alpha. That's FABY. And then we add 200 times FACY, which is going to also be the cosine. Cosine beta equals um, 360. Now for 1, we're gonna need to like substitute, I think. So, but this is like a pretty classic, like, physics-y problem. So 180... No, 200 times sine theta plus... Actually, can I do this without knowing what alpha plus beta is? I guess, because... Oh, can I do it without knowing um, how far the ropes are away? Wouldn't it change if they're farther or closer away? Would that, would that matter? Let me think. Well, that would just give us the angle, depending on how far they are away. But if we know the if we know the forces on them, we probably well, we might need to use law of cosines or something to do this, because this is going to be sine as well. So this will be one eighty five sine alpha equals zero. Huh. Well. we can get a ratio of the two angles. I might still use law of cosines. Like, because it's like sine A over something, sine equals sine something over something, right? A lot of sides, not a lot of cosines. Hmm, I'm stroking my chin at this. I feel like I'm missing something else. Normally, we would would be given like one of the angles. No, I kind of also just want to like try it with vectors. Like, what would it be with vectors? It would just be like if it was literally just the top thing. It would be like because if we have like sign sign and stuff is just a. 
a representation of a length. Have I finished all of calculus? Uh, yeah, I took all of calculus. Um, I still have differential two to do, so that's like more into linear systems and like Laplace transforms and uh, Fourier series and stuff, but other than that, I've done. I did multivariable and I did linear and uh, basic differential. What about physics engineering one, two, well, 123? Um, well, I have statics and then I have dynamics next quarter, so this is statics. This is like when a equals zero for any statics, so any, any um, system modeling problem. So like, you know, we did like a bike, right, that was like at rest or whatever. And it's like, this is just our first example, and it's like talking about the, you know, the contact points where it's like, oh, if you have like a force, if you have like a centroid that's here, like, is there more force at A or force B? Um, I only have one quarter left to get my degree. Oh, no. <laughs> no. This is only my second year. This shit gets complicated after this, because you do statics, you do dynamics, you do... Um, bunch of like thermal system modeling, fluid dynamics, uh, there's some crazy stuff too. I have like basically three years left as of like today. Um, let me see. What is a... Uh... Degree seems useless nowadays? Oh, I don't think so for engineering. Um, I have a lot of good stuff that I have to learn because like what else do I have? I have, oh my god, this is like so... Wait, that's transfer students. Where's like regular? Why is this one written all over? Get out of here. Oh, this is so blurry. What? <laughs> Where's my degree? It's political science. What's happening? What? Can you see? God damn it. Okay, here we go. I have. Let's see. What do I have? Um. I have like mechanics of materials courses I have to take, uh, circuit theory, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, uh, intermediate dynamics, mechanical systems design, mechanical control systems, mechanical vibrations, um, energy conservation. Yeah. Do I have to take hardware engineering? Um, we have to do like a little bit, but I, like we don't have to do as much. I think I only have like two classes on like electrical engineering stuff, because, like, a lot of it is, like, thermal stuff and system design, and then I have, like, a bunch of technical electives I have to do as well, which is, like, um, I think you can, I might take one on, like, plastics, like, thermoplastics and stuff, um, injection molding kind of stuff, but I, I haven't gotten there yet. I just have to, like, I have to take, like, a bunch of, uh, I'm probably taking mechanics and materials next quarter, probably. I'm gonna try and get into linear two so I can take that, finish that up. Um, uh, maybe try and take my other materials class and lab. Um, why is philosophy of design so late on this? Wait, what? <laughs> why did I take it so early? Wait, what? This has gotta be an old one. Yeah, 2017 to 2019. That's old. That's so weird. Oh, maybe that was general engineering. Oh wait, maybe I missed. Maybe I clicked on the wrong one. Oh yeah, this is this is yeah. Yeah, we have to take like fluid mechanics, uh, systems design, thermal system design. Yeah, all the good stuff. Oh, I have to see what my concentration is too. I'm probably gonna do general so I can get into product design. But I don't have to worry about that for like another year usually. Um, <laughs> I feel like oh, I want to do this with um, vectors. So if we did this with like, I think if I said sine of a, no, wait, okay, our x is gonna be our x is gonna be c sine. No, yes, our x is gonna be sine in this case. I think, right? Wait. Yes. Cosine of a, and then you say like multiply by the force. But like you might have to normalize that. Like, um, what would that be? Or do I need to? Norm I don't know if I need to normalize that. 
I probably do, because it's not like... Oh, wait, the unit... That's an interesting question. Is it like... Let's say if I say, like, sine of... Oh, because sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Math. That's kind of cool, actually. Wait, that's actually kind of cool. Wait, wait, that's actually... That's, <laughs> that's actually... <laughs> that's actually cool. <laughs> Sorry, that was, like, insane of me to say. Um, okay, yeah. So we sine and cosine. Um... And then that would equal... Like... Or plus W, which is like plus... Oh wait, um, this would be like negative. I think. And then plus... It might not have to be negative. I'll just say check sign. Lol. And then um, on W it would be like negative 360, 0. Which gives us the same equations as over there. That's cool to know. That's that's cool to just like have in my back pocket. I feel like I'm missing something though because I can't. Like, what could I do here? I can. Stretching. I can say sine equals sine, which is fun. Um, not not much I can do there with that. Not gonna lie. I could turn a sine into a cosine, maybe. Yes. I could do that. Can I do that? Is that like kosher? I forget. How can I turn the... I thought you could like add 360 to it or something and it turns into, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, but then it would have to be like cosine of like that angle plus like something in the middle on that. I don't need to do that. Hmm. We know the these two are equal and opposite. But again, it's like, we don't really have that much. Hmm. Maybe I'll come back to it. But again, it's like, it's the same, find the angles which create equilibrium, which, you know, would assume that we can find the angles that can create equilibrium. Is law of, what is law of cosines? Let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look. He did post about law of cosines. So, like, I kind of assume that, like, we might have to use a lot of cosines. Um, where is that? Mechanics math. That's what that's what we're here for. Um, um, quadratic, cubic, determinants. We love determinants. General cubic, not that. Um, I don't really care about that. Miscellaneous law of sines. Okay, a over b equals sine a over sine b. That requires you to know lengths of things, which we don't know. Huh, okay. Is there anything else that I'm missing in the problem? We know the tension forces. Like, would there not be multiple ones, though? Maybe not. I feel like you could have multiple angles, potentially, where... Because the idea is that it's a triangle, right? Probably with... Does it need to have the same area or something? I don't know if you could prove that. There's definitely different places where it could be equilibrium. Like, I'm not doubting that. But the question is, is, is there multiple locations? Is there even just two locations where those tension forces could be those things in two different places? I kind of feel like it could. Maybe I'm missing something. Hmm. Anyway, let's let's try another one. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that one. To be fair, I also haven't um, done anything in this class yet. <laughs> this is just me going off of my I've done physics knowledge. But it's good. It's, I think it's good to try stuff like this because then it's like, oh well, now it's like I can see where my knowledge is gonna have to shift from just doing physics to like doing. Uh... Okay, this is exciting. This is cool. 
We have a hook. Okay. Let me draw the hook. For you guys. A hook there. And there's a force coming off of it here. And a force coming off of it here. Q and P. So this is like a 4-3 type beat, and this is a 12-5. That's like 30-60-90, and also 30-60-90, I think. Okay. We are supposed to free the hook, so... Um, okay. If there's something in equilibrium, there needs to be a force definitely going this way. And also probably like up, right? Or down, right? yeah, up. Probably something like this. The wall needs to exert a force on them. What must the wall's reaction forces be on the hook? equilibrium. So like, if we add these vectors up, let's just pretend that they both go to the same point, whatever. Um, probably something like that is our resultant. Uh, let me switch to a different color, like roughly. That means the wall's reaction forces must be, like, here. It probably, probably wouldn't be, like, there, actually. Let's, let's be a little bit more kind. I think let's say that the, like, the point of them are both here. So this one would go, like, here instead, and this one would go, like, here instead. And so it would be, like, here. Again, blue. Because then if I, like, slide it, then it, like, you know, is gonna go like this. Something like that. Okay, we'll just say, like, wall. And that's R. Okay, uh, find the components of P plus, we'll just do P plus Q. Okay, wait, so, is this a good hook? <laughs> that's an extra question. It depends. I think it depends. Wait, it's loaded by cables. Oh, it just has cables on it? I'm not sure if it would be a good hook design. Do you have to know where the center of gravity is? Because... Hmm... Oh, wait, free... Oh, what must be... Oh. I need not solve, just try to f develop a feel or hypothesize what must be required for equilibrium. Hmm. It's gonna be interesting to see if I'm just, like, completely <laughs> off left base from this stuff. Uh, let's see. So we will do P plus Q. So P plus Q equals what? Maybe I should just like write the forces down, that would be smart. <laughs> Q equals 130 pounds. This would like cause it to rotate, right? Like how long rotate down? Is it a good hook design? I don't know, man. Probably about like I'm trying to like, think of like most hooks that I know. I don't know if it's a bad hook design. <laughs> I probably can't answer that yet. Oh, I'll try. <sighs> okay, let's add them up. So P plus Q. engineering handwriting. My engineering lettering is, um, it's okay. <laughs> so we'll say 120 times, let's do this, 3 squared plus 4 squared, wait, it was 3, 4, yeah. And then, wait, yeah, um, 
three up and four over. Plus 130 one over 12 squared plus five squared. I mean, I know, I actually know what the length should be. That length should be, it's, it should be seven. And this one should be five, I think. I mean, I can check that. So that would be 12 down, five over and 12 down. Let me see. 12 squared plus five squared. And then the square root of this. Wait, it's 13. I, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense, it's in seven. There's another one with seven though. Well, that's okay. Three, four, five, I remember. So that'll be 120 divided by 5. So 24, 24 times 3, 72. We have 72 plus 130. Oh, 10. 10 times 5 is 50. Look at how nice this is. Okay, 24 times 4. 96 plus, or minus, minus 120. So that would be 2 plus 50, 122, and then 96 minus 120 is negative 24. So we said that the resultant would go way over to the right and then down a little bit, and that was pretty much what we have. Equals R. How nice that is. Okay, is this a good hook design? Hmm. I mean, let's see. So if this is being a force applied, that means there'd be our force would be being a like reacting this way and reacting this way. It would be a bad hook design. Let's see. Like I'm trying, like, I'm trying not to think of, like, stresses and strains, I'm trying to think more of, like, something would fall off. Maybe, like, what if it were, like, this? Because then if we put, like, something on here, that would, that would work. Like, I mean, it would hold it, but, like, would it fall off? Is it because, like, oh, this, this internal force is, like, what about... But what, like, what about this? This would be a bad hook design. It doesn't stop the friction. Like, if there's a force being applied this way, then it's applying the force this way, but then it can still slide off. That would be a bad hook design. <laughs> this would be a bad hook design. Um, I think that's very skinny would be a bad hook design. If this were, like this instead, and it were very, very skinny, or like this, then if it pulls here, it would just bend this way. Or it would deform it to be like that. Right, if this pulls this way, then it turns into <laughs> that. That would be a bad hook design. Or it just breaks. good hook design for these? Well, maybe it's because it's like talking about the wall attachment? Because like, you don't have a lot of surface area against the wall. Well, maybe let's think about, let's draw this like bigger. What about, the for okay, I don't like the screen. Back to that. Okay, let's think about like the forces like that are actually going on here. Wow, that's bad, okay. There we go. There's the hook very large. So there's a force like here, which is actually being applied like here and here probably. And then there's a force being applied here. Here and here. 
So if we were to move the forces along their lines of action, we could apply them anywhere, I guess. Where's the centroid of this? Well, I don't know. But it's kind of like... If I had to guess... There'd probably be more weight over here. Like, it'd probably be like, here. Like, if I had to guess, there's probably a little bit more weight over there. Hmm. But if these forces were here and we wanted to... That means they're being applied... Like, towards the middle of the hook. Okay, well that's like, it's not too bad. Because like, all the forces here would all go like, to the middle of the hook. I wonder if it's good or bad that its center of gravity is there. If it's center- what if it was really long? If it was really long like this? That would be worse, I think. <laughs> because then, like, if the center of gravity was all the way out, out here. But if it were like- if it were like this. Like a chonky hook. Like, really chonky. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, really chonky. Then, like, that seems like it'd be better, because... But I don't even know. At that point, maybe, like, we just look at this as a different thing, because it would, like, deform on its own. Hmm. Is it a good hook design? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. What makes a good hook design? Um, these are, these are, um, hooks for essays. Engineering. Hooks are a good design choice when you want to decouple implementation details of an abstraction from its- what? <laughs> how do- how do engineer a hook? <laughs> Tendency problem, crane hook. Oh, how do you structure a hook? No, not that. Wait, let's see how to design a fish hook. Images. Tangency problem. These are all about tangency. We need to know about standard hooks. Tension hook anchorage design in concrete. Crane hook. Hmm, maybe you want the forces to be... Using the principle of tendency to construct crane hook. That looks like a technical drawing issue. Hook force distribution. Oh, maybe we can look in our textbook. Evaluation of hooks. Ooh, stress distribution. This is fancy. This is fancy stuff. <laughs> Wait, you guys need to see this. You guys need to see this one. <laughs> you guys need to see this one. Wait, oh, my mouse is not plugged in. Here, wait, look. Now I'm just gonna look at hooks. Wait, that's not it. Oh. I like this is slightly more zoomed in. Look at this. Look at this. Wait, this is like cropped. Why is it cropped, bro? straightened. The slumped one sucks. That would be a bad hook. Biomedical analysis. Von, von Mises stress. Hook grasp. Power. Precision. <laughs> Wait, this is an awesome image. Hook. Pinch. Tripod. Oh wait, this is like, what is this? Hot court info. Bebkey. Bev Hookgrasp.html. 
We'll wait for that. We'll wait for that little site to load. Wait, I need to pull up my textbook. Let me pull up my textbook real quick. I'm not gonna let you guys see my email. Oh my god, This hook problem might be in there. I'm- I'm- I would like to- I would love to know where this hook is. How good of a hook this is. Um... Oh, whoopsies. Maybe PDF? Maybe just starred? Yep. Wait, I- I, I have this. I just have it on my computer. I don't know what I'm trying to like. Is it called Dynamics? I think it is. Okay, here we go. Here we go, chat. We need to go down to the hook problem. Sorry for flashing for a little bit. Um, okay, addition of vectors. They probably want us to do component-based stuff. Why do I need to apply the law of signs? Hello? What? You should not have to be doing... the law of cosines to do vector addition. Ooh. Okay, look at this. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. Okay, see, they give you one angle. Give it- okay. Determine the tension in the ropes. We could do this one. Um, should we do this one and like see if I can like get it? Uh, or wait, we have to find the tension of the ropes. access. Tension of the ropes given that alpha. Oh, alpha is forty-five. Oh, wait, that's not really an issue. Yeah, that's not- that's not the same thing. Value of alpha for minimum tension. Minimum tension in... Oh, in rope 2? Well, okay, so we want the minimum tension. That's interesting. Some derivative thing, I guess. Oh, no. It's just split equally, I guess. Solving problems on your own. Problems. There's the hook! There's the hook! That, like, seems like a fairly okay hook. These are a lot of, lot of problems about hooks here. Our point A of a hook support. Hmm, I wonder what it would mean. Because the one that we have is... that's not it. Look at this, hook grasp. Anyway, that's getting beside the point. Um, this is our hook. That's a 3-4-5 triangle. I don't know if that's in here. 35, 30, oh, what would be, uh... Solved by trigonometry. <laughs> so funny. Adding forth by component, thank you. Um, let's see, that's fine. Um, I don't know why he'd be pulling a rope at the top of a building. That's what I don't like about application pro problems. It's like, why go through the trouble of doing an application if you're just gonna have a guy pulls rope on building? You could be doing anything there. By summing XY components, okay, sure. That's a lot of forces on a bolt. Solving problems on your own, let's see. Ooh, that's a... That's an engineering type shape right there. <laughs> that's a lot of okay. Um, member BD. Ooh, this is cool. Member BD exerts on member AC a force P along line BC. Member BC exerts a member AC. 
that's kind of neat. I like that because they're not just giving you vectors, like you have to actually figure it out. Yeah, because you'll have like one going down that's like the wave. These are cool. These are cool. I like these. I'll probably have to see because I think I have this class for I think tomorrow. Or is an equilibrium? Yush. Newton's first law of motion. Yush. Hmm. None of these are particularly helpful for my cable problem here, my hook problem. Hmm. What system each walk rate consists consisted of transverse beams of the critical fastener that was evolving connection failure. Oh my god, it would end up turning the fastener all the way from the second floor to fourth floor? What? Let's apply a static equilibrium analysis to determine the effect of this design change on the fastener. What, bro? <laughs> First, identify the loads involved, and treating them as a particle, draw a free body diagram. So the loads involved are shown in CS figure 2.2. So the force of deck 4, force of deck 2. Oh, I see, so they're not in line. Ah, they're not in line. So you, like, in here, those forces would be canceling because they're right in line, but in here they're not going to cancel because they're not in line. Treating them as a small portion of the hanger. Yes, yes equals zero. And then, yeah, hanger and fastener. Yeah, the fastener has to support both of the weights versus just one of the weight. Oh, I got, I see. Mm hmm. And then the building fell apart. That's why you don't do that. That's why you need an engineer. Problems. Why are they in blue? Um, that's not very fun. That's better. Still not see this hook problem, but I know we are asking for too much. Huh. I might be asking for too much here. Adding forces in space, that seems like we're not doing that for a little bit, but, you know, go off. I really wish we could use, like, more vectors in this class, like, just the vectors and not the... I get it. It's like, I know physicists are like really into the whole like, you need to write it in terms of unit vectors. And I get it, but like... It is it is the unit vectors, you know? It's like, just so much faster to write it. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Anyway, we're just doing a tour of this textbook now. <laughs> hey guys, um, uh, you this textbook either. <laughs> Well, that's all I got. Maybe I'll just do a shorter stream for today. Because, like, I did just get here. And I don't have that much work. And also, um... Yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap up. I think I'm gonna do a little wrap up. But I'll, I'll be streaming, um, Tuesday, I think. Tuesday. I will update you guys on this on this hook problem. I'm I'm fascinating, yeah, fascinated by the <laughs> the implications of the hook. <laughs> I really wonder, like, what, like, why would it be bad? I can't figure out a reason why it would be bad, except for maybe that it would be bad at staying on the wall. But like the forces of it go to the center of the hook. And everywhere I look at other hooks that are well designed, the forces go to the center of the hook. But also, how do how would you make a hook where they don't go to the center of the hook? Like if it's square, but like even if it's square, they would still go to like the center of the hook. Like how do you how 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 would you make it not do that? Maybe if it was an oval <laughs> like that. 
<laughs> and you did it here and here, and so it went here instead and it got thrown off balance. I mean, that seems worse because then the resultant would be like, right, let's say if it was here and here. But it would be like a, oh, an, oh, an ellipse has two centers, so like I don't even know where these would point. They would just like fuck and I don't know, point probably here. But if it was here, like that, like where do those point? I don't know. They don't cross all each other in the same place. This seems like a worse hook if you put, if you put stuff up here. Or you know what else would be a bad hook? <laughs> that would be a bad hook. I mean, you could put stuff here, or here, but this would be a bad hook. No, but you could clip it on there, like that. I, see that? Even that's not a bad hook. I don't know. I don't know how you make a bad hook. I don't know how to stress analysis a hook. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I got for today. Um, let's see, what else, what other kind of stuff might we be doing? Um, I have some data analysis stuff, like stat stuff that I'll probably be doing. Um, I don't know. Yeah, probably that, this, um, des some design stuff. Um, yeah, maybe doing like the art. I have like art stuff I have to do for design, philosophy of design. Um, what else? I'm trying to remember. Oh, I might have chem to do, but yeah, pretty, probably just mostly statics. Not mostly statics, mostly statics and uh, data analysis. Anyway, cool. Um, hope everybody had a good stream. It's nice to be back. I will stream again on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, I'll see everybody later. Bye!